Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Ford, and we are here for another poetry discussion. We are quickly approaching 100 videos in the poetry discussion playlist. And I don't believe there are any repeats yet, but we're going to get there. This is something I'm going to get into that in this video. Look, we've got nearly 100 poems in the poetry discussion playlist. We also have a poetry review playlist here on the channel. Uh, so if those are things that you might be interested in, consider sticking around and checking those other videos out. Uh, and as always, hitting the like button really helps me out here on the channel. We're here for a little bit of Bukowski, a little bit of Bukowski, the bluebird, in fact. Um, let's just get into the reading before we, we jump into the details of the discussion here. The bluebird. There's a bluebird in my heart that wants to get out, but I'm too tough for him. I say, stay in there. I'm not going to let anybody see you. There's a bluebird in my heart that wants to get out, but I pour whiskey on him and inhale cigarette smoke. And the whores and the bartenders and the grocery clerks never know that he's in there. There's a bluebird in my heart that wants to get out, but I'm too tough for him. I say, stay down. Do you want to mess me up? Do you want to screw up the works? Do you want to blow my book sales in Europe? There's a bluebird in my heart that wants to get out, but I'm too clever. I only let him out at night sometimes, when everybody's asleep. I say, I know that you're in there, so don't be sad. Then I put him back, but he's singing a little in there. I haven't quite let him die. And we sleep together like that, with our secret pact, and it's nice enough to make a man weep. But I don't weep. Do you? Now, you're going to get a couple different poems a hundred times, um, probably, here on this channel. I Died for Beauty by Emily Dickinson and The Bluebird by Charles Bukowski. You're going to get poetry reviews, you're going to get poetry discussions, you're going to get different iterations of videos about these two poems, and I'm not sorry about it. Deal with it. These are two of my favorites. Part of the reason why that is, is why we're here for this video today, for this iteration of The Bluebird here on the channel. Every time you read something, every time you read anything, you're a different person than you were the last. Every time you do anything, every, every time you do anything, obviously you're a different person than you were the last time. But every time you read something, you're a different person than the last time you read it. Every time you reread something, you are bringing something different to the table than you had on you the last time. That's true for all literature, but I think it's especially true for poetry because poetry, poetry is just a jab and an uppercut. That's all. That's all you've got time for. So when you're reading a novel, if you're a different person than you were the last time you read that novel, which obviously you are, what you can do is spend a lot of time noticing things in that novel you didn't notice before. Because every paragraph, there's going to be some time where this thing is rotating someplace else. You don't really get that in poetry. There's so little going on. It's just jab and uppercut. And because of that, so, so the reason that I say jab and uppercut, boxing, you're right here, you're in guard, right? What a jab aims to do, in, when you're like this, a jab aims to knock your head back, right? It aims to give the person attacking a different angle from which to throw an uppercut so that they can really damage you. Um, so that they can really knock you off base and cause that concussive force. All there is in poetry is the concussive force. It's a jab to set you up. There's a bluebird 
in my chest. And then the uppercut to knock you out. It's enough to make a man weep, but I don't weep. Do you? In novels, in short stories, there's so much going on that we don't necessarily have to bring the differences in us to the table every time we read it. In MMA terms, a poem is Conor McGregor. I'm trying to get in there and kill you in 30 seconds. A novel is Nate Diaz. Yeah, if I get the chance to knock you out, I'm going to knock you out. But we're going five rounds, baby. Some, we're both, we're going to be bloody. We're throwing a thousand punches. That's what's, that's what's on the docket tonight. That's a novel. The, um, the poetry is just a couple different things going, there's just a couple different things going on. Just a jab and an uppercut. So the differences between readings really are to do with you, really are what you're bringing to the table, the difference between this time and the last time you read it. So when you read it this time, do we go back to that old interpretation that we had of the poem, allowing the literature to teleport us, to transport us back into a previous us. Do we do that? It's possible it's there. You can do that. It is absolutely a valid way to experience literature. It's absolutely, absolutely a valid way to experience your favorite literature. It's absolutely, absolutely, absolutely a valid way to re-experience your favorite literature so that you can get back in touch with something in you. Or, with that interpretation crusted over, might we open a new wound and dig around a little bit? For me, one of the phrases upon which that interpretation hinges is the last phrase here. So there is a story from the founding of the United States. I'm probably getting this wrong. Look, if we're using MMA terms, I'm going to chail son in a story here. I'm going to tell you a story that I kind of think I maybe know, that I've probably heard somewhere, but in a different way. When all the founding fathers were sitting around, throwing around ideas for this document, that document, this is what we got to do. We got to start here. What are we going to do with that? We got to start here. We can't do it the way we did it in the motherland, right? We got to, you know, change things. There was a painting or a mural or something, some type of visual art on the wall at the very back of this room so that whoever was speaking would be sitting up here at the front of the room looking back at us. I think it was Benjamin Franklin said that that mural, that painting, whatever it was back there, there was a sun on the horizon. And he spent a lot of time wondering, is that sun rising or is that sun setting? Is that sun rising on the American experience or is it setting on the, Mer on the American experiment? Hard to say. Towards the end of things, they were wrapping things up. They had... Uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin had taken Thomas Jefferson to France to see some women because it was Benjamin Franklin, you know. And everything got wrapped up. You know, it's, it's funny how that happens. A little bit of uh, stress relief and everything starts to go as planned. And he said, we were at this meeting and I knew the sun was rising. The sun was rising on the American experiment. Here we are a couple hundred years later. Why do I say that? Why do I throw that out there? I want to read this poem one more time. The Bluebird. There's a bluebird in my heart that wants to get out, but I'm too tough for him. 
I say, stay in there. I'm not going to let anybody see you. There's a bluebird in my heart that wants to get out, but I pour whiskey on him and inhale cigarette smoke. And the whores and the bartenders and the grocery clerks never know that he's in there. There's a bluebird in my heart that wants to get out, but I'm too tough for him. I say, stay down. Do you want to mess me up? Do you want to screw up the works? Do you want to blow my book sales in Europe? There's a bluebird in my heart that wants to get out, but I'm too clever. I only let him out at night sometimes, when everybody's asleep. I say, I know that you're in there, so don't be sad. Then I put him back, but he's singing a little in there. I haven't quite let him die. And we sleep together like that with our secret pact. And it's nice enough to make a man weep. But I don't weep. Do you? That last phrase there, but I don't weep. Do you? How are we supposed to take that last phrase? But I don't weep. Do you? In the former, but I don't weep. Do you? It's prodding. You don't weep, do you, sissy boy? That is the interpretation we can go with there. You don't weep, do you? I'm still the tough guy. You don't weep, do you? Do you, huh? Tell me. Because we can fix that, you know? Or is it the latter? But I don't weep. Do you? In the latter, what we're doing is it is our speaker asking permission. Is this poem ended with our speaker asking us permission to himself weep? It's easy, I think, with the predominance of this poem building up the tough guy character to say, no, this is provocation. He's prodding us. He's daring us to weep so that he can come at us. But I think that might be short-sighted. In fact, I think it might be the antithesis of the entire poem. Because our speaker starts by telling us there's a bluebird in his heart. Our speaker in this poem has already opened up to us. The speaker in this poem has already shown us the bluebird. In fact, it's titled the poem, The Bluebird. How are, we to take, how are we to take this? Are we to take this as prodding? Or are we to take this as, I don't weep. I mean, you don't weep either, do you? Because if you, I mean, if you were to weep, then maybe I could weep too. I mean, if, if you were, if you were already gonna weep, you know, I showed you my bluebird. We could weep together. I think this is an interesting hinge on which this poem can swing. And every time I read this poem, it's one of those lines that I play with. It's one of those lines that I have to toggle back and forth in order to say what I think this poem is about. And I think the more I read this poem, the more I think that it might be our speaker asking us permission to weep. He has already opened it up to us. He has already shown us that bluebird. Is he asking us here if it is okay in the end to weep? I think there's something there to look at. I think there's something there to play with, especially for me, because this is uh, shortly before this, we have our speaker exploiting 
his and the bluebirds packed. If there is a twain there, might there be a twain betwixt us? Might speaker and audience have a pact as well? I think it's something. Uh, I think it's something fun with this poem to think about. That is all I have for this poetry discussion. Again, quickly approaching the 100 videos uh, in the playlist, the 100 poetry discussion milestone, maybe. Hitting that like button always helps me out on this channel. If you were here by chance but not design, and you would like to endeavor in more, partake in more poetry discussions, consider hitting that subscribe button and sticking around for more.